Alright guys, so it's JP here and I'm going to start off the neutrals with the commons and epic, uh, rares and then I'm going to go on to the epic and legendaries for the next part here. So we have quite a few to run through, uh, so it's going to be slightly longer videos and uh, it's going to be in two parts for the neutrals. So we're going to start off straight away with the zealous initiate. Uh, one mana, one one, death fellow give a family minion plus one plus one. Um, do I think this is a good card? The answer is just plain out right now. I don't think it's good enough to see play in either Constructed or Arena, but um, it's definitely not the worst one drop I think that you can pick. I think that still goes to Angry Chicken um, or Wisp. Like, there are certainly worse choices in Arena that you can run into, so you might see this in Arena, but it's definitely not one of the better cards in Arena. Except we have Tentacle of Nassau, Death Fellow do 1 damage to all minions. Um, if this is going to see play, I guess it's going to be in that style of like a control mage style where it actually runs the other one, the fire one. Um, do I think it's better than that one? No, because it's still damage to all. So, generally I think this card is just a really poor card. It's not going to see play in Constructed or Arena in my opinion. Um, if it's going to see play in Constructed, I'm, guess it's, I'm guessing it's going to be in a clean patron list. Just because it has sort of a pseudo uh, whirlwind effect, so we'll see how it goes. But personally, I think this is just a really bad card. Next, we have Twisted Wogan, uh, the infested version version of Wogan Infantrator. Uh, three mana, three one, or uh, two mana, three one stealth. Um, I, I, there's not much to say about it. I think it's decent in arena, but it's never going to see constructive play. Next we have the Bluefin Tide Hunter. Battle Cry 7 a 1 1 ooze with taunts. Is there a picture of that? Yes, here we go. So that's a pretty interesting ooze. Um, this is actually a really interesting card because I think it it does buff Moloch's Moloch decks a little bit. Uh, in the sense that the taunt, you know, although not a Moloch, can protect the Molochs from things like uh, the rogue's hero power, so I think people look down on this card a little prematurely. I think it's just slightly better than the regular Titan Hunter, but um, we have to play around with it to see how it goes. Uh, personally, I think this card is pretty okay. Uh, in Arena, it's fine, in because tight Caller is fine, so this is fine. Uh, in Constructed, uh, we have to see how it goes. Next, we have the Twilight Geomancer, 2 mana, 1 fall, so it's one of those really big uh, ta uh, minions in terms of health for 2 drops. Um, taunt, if your Cthulhu taunt wherever it is, so that's a really interesting one. Um, I'm not sure if it really fits a Cthulhu deck just because I believe when you slam down Cthulhu odds are about 80% of the time you're killing off your opponent. Um, but if you don't kill off your opponent, then that's fine, I guess. Uh, it gives the Cthulhu ta Taunt, which is a really big deal. Because by then it's going to be a pretty big minion anyways. So... Uh, maybe a one-off, but I don't see this being too great in Cthulhu decks. There are better cards in the two slot. Uh, you won't see this in Arena anyways, so... Don't really need to talk about it there. So this is by far far superior to drop to the other one. Um, maybe you play both of this in one deck, I'm not really sure. Um, maybe we have the Beckon of Evil, 2 mana, 2, 3. Battle Cry give you Cthulhu plus 2 plus 2, wherever it is. Um, the buff is really solid. The 2 3 body is personally, I think, more valuable than 3 2 nowadays because of how. because the knife juggler now. So the more health actually trades better with the knife juggler, which. Um, it's, it, which is not the case before because life check goes to 3 2, and then you play that, and then you play a 2 3, and then either he kills it, trades it with the uh, knife juggler, or he just rolls something and like floods the board and kills your minion, right? So, uh, I think the 2 3 is slightly better now, and the ability is really strong. This is probably a you know, auto include in any uh, uh, cartoon deck, in my opinion. Next we have the Dust Ball, 2 mana 4 1. This card is complete garbage and uh, nothing else. It can be really strong against classes that can't ping for one like Priest. 
maybe, but that's about it. On the upside, it, against a class like Priest or Warrior, it'll, it'll always trade up, so. And it's a Priest, so. There you go. In arena, that card is probably not good enough. Next, we have Twilight Elder. Elder. At the end of the turn, if you have a thing plus one, plus one, whatever it is, three mana, three, four. This is probably, again, one of those auto includes for Cthulhu deck. Um, but it has just a really solid base body, which is good enough, I think. Uh, next, we have the Squirming Tentacle. Three mana, two, four, Taunt. Mm. I can see why it's not a 2-5, because as a 2-5, it would just be a better version of the uh, Carrion Grub. But the 4 health is just so poor that I think it's just not good enough uh, to see play. It doesn't even have a tag, so it's probably not very valuable. Uh, so probably not a really good, probably not good enough for both Constructor and Arena. Next we have Spawn of the South. Now this is probably one of those cards that's going to push, uh, keep aggro alive in the expansion because uh, aggro decks have been nerfed so heavily with like Knife Juggler being nerfed and uh, Honor Creeper rotating out, Nerubian Eggs uh, rotating out. Uh, this is one of those cards that will provide you with a really big buff ability. So obviously things that can swarm the board with a lot of small minions like the 5 mana spell from Paladin or the Forbidden uh, Ritual is going to be really powerful to combo this, especially if you can run this into a minion like Suicide It Off to get the buff. I think it's overall one of those really powerful decks, probably good enough to see play in Constructed, but in Arena, uh, outside you're not going to get too many buffs off from this card. Uh, excuse me, so not good in Arena, but probably see this in Zoom style decks. Next you have M Gam uh, Agam Am Gam <laughs> whatever you pronounce this Rager. Three mana one five. Yep. Next we have the Aberrant Berserker, four mana three five, image plus two attack. So if you ping it for one, it gets a it becomes a five four four four, which is tall strider stats, so I don't think it's that great. It's not the worst thing you can draft, but it's definitely not the best thing. I think I, I feel like it's probably not good enough though. Maybe in arena it is because the three attack means you could probably trade into a smaller guy, a smaller guy and kill it. And then it becomes a much bigger creature that can kill your opponent's next turn. So in that sense, you might be good enough in arena. But uh in constructor I think this card's just appalling. Next we have the evolve cobalt four mana two two. Spell damage plus two. This card is just horrendous. Don't ever play this. Don't ever pick it in arena. Next we have Cthulhu's Chosen. Four mana for two. Divine Shield Battle Cry for Cthulhu plus two plus two wherever it is. Now this card is one that I've debated a lot on whether it's good or bad. Just because on one hand it's really powerful. It looks really powerful, right? Because it buffs the Cthulhu and it's four attack for Divine Shield. And the fact that it has two health means the card is much much more powerful than a uh, Scarlet Crusader. Having said that though, um, it is a lot easier to ping off a Divine Shield than it is to go through something like a Piloted Treasure. And I compare this with Piloted Treasure just because I feel the Divine Shield could act like the first body of Piloted Treasure, except the second half that comes out is always going to be as good as what you get as a Piloted Treasure. So in a way, it's kind of like a Piloted Treasure. So, basically if they can't ping off the Divine Shield, this would be as good as a Pirate Shredder is what I'm trying to say. So do I think this is really powerful? The answer is yes. At the same time, it's kind of easy to ping off a Divine Shield. So is it really, 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 really that powerful? We have to see how the format, whether the format is fast enough or too slow for this kind of cards. But I think you would consider playing this in a Cthulhu deck, especially if you don't have like a lot of dust or gold to buy packs, this is probably an easy option to get. Next we have Infested Torrent, 4 mana, 2, 3. Uh, the slime is here, so yeah, Taunt, Death Rattle, Summon, a 2-2 two, two slime. The 2-2 two, two slime is not Taunt, so it's not a Sludge Belcher, 2-3. Uh, 
is really weak, and then the 2 2 is also really weak. So I think this is just a really bad card, and you probably won't see play in Constructed or Arena, in my opinion. Next, we have Polluted of Order, 4 mana 2. Uh, two, 4 mana 4 2, the death of the draw card, so it's kind of like the loop order effect. Uh, in fact, it's exactly the loop order effect, it's just a double loop order, right? Costs twice as much, has twice as much health, twice as much attack. Uh, the only downside is that this card is really bad if you're not ahead on the board. If you're ahead on the board and you slap this down, then yeah, it's probably really strong, but other than that, I think it's really bad. Uh, on the upside, it has the ups uh, it won't die to Earthshock and Nikli like negate its uh death fellow ability like uh the root order would so unless you have spell power then you're screwed right uh but yeah definitely an interesting card more like you see playing arena than in constructed next we have cult apothecary five mana four four battle cry for each of your enemy minion restore two health to your hero um i can see how this would be strong against like a token deck like could heal for way more than you would with an anti heal bot. But against a control deck, this card is like way worse. Like you're never gonna be the f like it doesn't replace heal bot in against something like a freeze mage. Because it's only probably gonna heal you for two at a time. At the most. Maybe maybe four at the most as opposed to the heal bot that heals you for eight. But against like a zoo deck it could heal you for ten. So if you're fighting for bot control and then you play this, you probably go ahead. I don't think it's good enough to see play in both arena uh, constructed in my opinion. So yeah I think it's a pretty terrible card. Next we have Cyclotron 5 mana 3 4 Taunt Divine Shield. For some reason Anoitron is now playing a guitar and it's speakers and it's the fire guitar so it's got the Mad Max thing going on. Um, 3 4 with Divine Shield Taunt I think is For 5 mana, I think it's pretty okay. I'm not sure if this will be good enough for Arena, but perhaps in Constructed, like, might see some play optimistically. Um, but I believe, realistically speaking, it's, uh, it's just a really bad card. Next, we have Nurukun Profit, 6 mana for 4. At the start of your turn, we use this card's cost by 1. So, this is actually one of those. Cards that it's kind of like uh, Bova, and for you who don't know what Bova is, I can't blame you because you've probably never seen this card at all. Uh, actually, I have a golden one, <laughs> uh, golden Bova, where it's one of those cards that you want to keep holding on from the very start of the game, right? Because the moment you play it, it tends to be a really big minion or really tempo minion. This card, hold it on turn one, you play it on turn three, it is a three mana for four, which is pretty good. Um, if you hold, play this really late game and it costs nothing and you do a big clear of the board, it's also a pretty good tempo play as well. So I think this card is really good in arena, um, but probably not worth considering in constructed just based on how constructed uh, is so refined. Next we have Bob Creeper 7 mana 6 8. So this, at this point, I'm guessing we're reaching all the arena type cards, right? Which is basically really powerful stats. And our Bob Keeper is one of those really powerful stats. Uh, it's obviously the corrupted or big version of the Fen Creeper, which I believe is. Uh, sorry about that, I know it's a bit loud. Um, Fen Creeper. 3 6, this is a 6 8. So this is actually way more powerful than Fen Creeper. Uh, at this point, I believe 6 attack is more than enough because, like I said, it passes that magic number of 5. And 8 health means it's going to suck up at least 2 to 3 smaller minions. So, yeah, I think this is a really powerful card in Arena. Definitely one of the better picks. Uh, and you always need Taunt in Arena. Or do it. Taunt is always a good thing to have in Arena, is what I'm trying to say. And um, this is a really powerful Taunt. So, yeah, this is almost constructible viable, I think. Uh, construct it's constructed viable. Um, but not quite. It's just a little too weak. Uh, it's just a little too expensive is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but in the arena, I think this card is just really solid. If you have Grotesque Fire Dragonhawk, uh, which I just recently started playing World of Warcraft, so I've actually seen like these uh, Dragonhawk things around. It's pretty cool. 
so we have the 7 mana 5 5 wind fury which is it's pretty bad so i can say yeah uh, you probably won't pick this in arena or in um constructed next we have the eldritch horror 8 mana 6 10 for uh, this is a pretty interesting card. 10 health is way better than uh, 8 health. Uh, sorry about that, I just need to reply this message. Okay. Um, yeah, so the 10 health is actually a really big deal. And again, it has 6 attack, which, like I mentioned many, many times before, is the magic number, right? That's that's past 5, which is what you want to aim for for an attack value or damage value. Um, The fact that it has 10 health is also a really huge deal because uh, it can just trade a lot. I do, I do believe this is actually the first vanilla hit drop that we've received here. Um, I could be wrong, but yeah. So it's the first vanilla, and it's a really big minion. This does trade one for one with the force tank, and I believe with pretty much most of the eight drops. Uh, well, Ragnaros could trade favorably against it, I guess. Uh, yeah, so Ragnaros might be the only exception, uh, and I put them might, right? Technically, this could trade equally with Ragnaros as well, so this is a really powerful minion. Uh, I'm guessing this is probably going to be really good in Arena, uh, but you probably won't see this in Constructed because it has no text. Next, we have Faceless Behemoth of 10 mana, 10 10. Uh, really, really powerful card here. Uh, in terms of a 10 10, it's more powerful than these two for sure. Definitely not as powerful as Deathwing, but uh, we don't expect it to. Uh, the only uh, downside to this is that it doesn't get discounted, so this is just a really, really, really big minion, uh, which uh, might actually see some play in Arena. So, uh, But I personally believe the previous card was just much better than this because it comes down two, two turns earlier. And the 10 attack, I think, is pretty much negligible unless you're going to hit him in the face with it. Uh, to which then obviously the 10 attack is better than 6 but for trading I think it's about the same this guy would probably just eat up bigger minions than the other one but the other one could trade fairly evenly with a big minion so yeah only C play in arena probably not in constructed uh, next we have the Silithid Swarm 3 mana 3 5 so that's pretty good body can only attack if your hero attack this turn, so I'm guessing the only class that you play this in is in Rogue. Uh, you, do you play this in Constructed? I think not. In Arena, on the other hand, I think this, this card is pretty insane. Because with your hero power, technically it's kind of like a 4 damage ability, right? So, pretty powerful card, I think. Um, definitely expect to see this in Arena. Probably one of the better picks for 3 drops, actually, in Arena. Next we have Disciple of Platoon 3 mana 2 1. Battle Cry deal 2 damage if you platoon plus plus whatever it is. This card is insane. Even if you take out the gift of Platoon plus 2 plus 2, wherever it is, this card is insane. So, yes, you definitely play this. You expect to see this in every Platoon deck. Definitely another auto include. Next we have Midnight Drake 4 mana 1 4. Battle Cry gain plus one attack for each other card in your hand. So this is the reverse Twilight Drake, uh, where Twilight Drake is all health and um, for attack. This is all attack and for health. Um, but make no mistake, this is way worse than Twilight Drake. So you don't get murdered by Earth Shock, but you're going to get hit pretty hard with silence anyways on this card and the fact that it's a 4 mana dragon makes it even worse because honestly would you play this over twilight drake? no would you play this over twilight guardian? no would you play this over the dragonet card? what's it called? hungry dragon? no you would definitely would play this over hungry dragon and would you play it over dragon scene sorcerer? no so the answer is this this card is just not good enough so it's a pretty bad dragon here um, but in Arena, I think it might be fair. If you have 4 cards in your hand, it's a 5-4, and then that's pretty much good enough. So it's okay in Arena, but it's pretty bad in uh, Constructed. Next, we have either Secrets, the 
hero we've all been waiting for, for Secret Pally. Well, guess what? You came out too late. Um, because I mean, this Secret Pally is dead. I actually missed one, so I'll go jump back to that later on. But yeah, this, this card is just horrendous. Uh, because the only cards, or rather, the only deck that is going to eat up more than one secret is probably Secret Paladin. And honestly, this card is probably not as good against Secret Paladin as something like the Kazan Mystic here. Um, that's because Kazan Mystic has the, the off chance to steal the Avenge. Uh, well, this one eats up the Avenge, sure, but the only reason Secret Paladin is strong is that it's because it usually has a board by the time it dumps the whole secret uh, mysterious challenger thing and then you can't really deal with everything at once because the secrets kind of uh, halt your attack in a way and makes you trade unfavorably. Um, so the either secrets, well your buff that doesn't solve that, so that core foundation where it screws up with your attack and it uh, trades unfavorably. Of course if you play against a secret uh, Paladin on uh, Secret Paladin, and he only slap like throws down the Mysterious Challenger. Then you play this guy, and you're probably good to go. <laughs> then you'll probably win that game pretty easily because this becomes most likely a most Secret Paladins run at least four secrets, so it's going to be at least a six, eight. So it's going to kill the Challenger with no problem. Um, Ironically, the deck I think this is most powerful against is Freeze Mage, even though they only have two secrets, uh, Ice Block and Ice Barrier. It's just the, the fact that you can eat up the Ice Barrier and the Ice Block without proccing it uh, both at the same time as well. Makes this card pretty good, and then once it gets buffed out of the range, you know, you have to fireball it to kill it. So, uh, that's probably the deck that this is strongest against. It's also probably as strong against like a secret style Hunter with Freezing and Explosives, but I guess that deck is kind of like a secret pally where I think Kazan Mystic is better. Uh, so yeah, not as good as people think it is. Um, you probably won't see this in Arena or in Constructed in my opinion. Uh, though in Wild, uh, that might be a thing. Oh, okay, we really went through that. So now we're going to the Backwater, Blackwater Pirate, 4 mana 2-5. Your weapons cost 2 less. This card is just really poor in my opinion. Um, the only real good tempo play you can do is this and a fire rate or axe, I guess. So is that really worth it? My answer is no. I think this card is really poor. Um, maybe even not worth considering in a pirate deck, in my opinion. Next, we have the corrupt You can walk 5 mana 6 6. Definitely restore 8 health to, your, to the enemy hero. Um, this is a really powerful card. It's kind of like the mega zombie child, right? I mean, most people's idea is that, oh, you compare it to a uh, heal bot, but honestly, this is more like a zombie child, where it's an overstated minion that heals your opponent, right? So if you're not bursting him down, trying to burst him down, uh, this guy is actually really good for trading, because it's going to eat up any 4 drop easily, I think, and uh, probably trade favorably against other 5 drops, so uh, it's a really good card in my opinion, so you probably see play in Arena, where Zombie Chow is a really premium card. Uh, Constructed wise, probably not, just because um, it's too refined for a card that whose only real advantage is to trade uh, favorably against other minions. So, in Priest, this could be a burst card as well, with Alphanize or Priest or the other card that uh, turns all your heal into burn for one turn. Alright, moving on, we have the last three cards here. We have Scarab Cultus, 6 mana, 7, 6. That will give you a cartoon plus 2 plus 2 variants. This is probably the, like, the lousiest of the cartoon cards, in my opinion. Um, it's not a bad card, I just think it's not a good card. Um, so, yeah, nothing much to say about it. I don't think that this is the 6 drop that you'll be looking for to put in your cartoon deck, but I could be wrong. Um, I just believe there's better cards in your, maybe not cartoon cards, but there's definitely better cards that you can put in this slot than this one. But if you're really desperate for a cartoon boss, then yeah, if you have that, then put that. 
Uh, next we have the corrupt seal, which is the corrupt collide seal. Um, six mana to three battle cry deal all. Uh, deal two damage to all non warlock. So this is kind of like the. I guess the way to see it is like a combination of a two three body in the collide seal and demon wrath, but for warlocks, right? In one card. Because that's basically what you can, you're getting. Um, overall, I think this card is pretty trash. Because it's there. I, I'm not sure if you put this in a Murloc deck. Just because it's so clunky and Murlocs tend to be really fast. Um, though, again, if Murloc Paladin is a thing, then I guess this is a thing to put in there. But I'm just really underwhelmed with this. I don't think it's good enough. Uh, both in the Renai Constructor. And lastly, we have Doom Caller, 8 mana, 8, uh, 7, 9. Pretty okay stats. Barrowcrime gives you a 2 plus 2 plus 2 wherever it is. That's pretty good. If it's dead, shuffle it into your deck. So, this is the ability that I think is really, really cool, right? Because you can get Doom and not kill your opponent, and then it kills it. And then you play this, and then you get it back, right? Now, I'm not sure if the buffs stay or whether they get reset after it's dead, but if they stay or if it gets reset, uh, this is still good enough, I think. Um, I don't think Blizzard has come out and say explicitly if there's like a graveyard uh, for cards that get used up to go into or whether, you know, uh, because if there is then this card can actually buff it while it's in the graveyard. Uh, if not, this card is pretty, it's still pretty okay I think this for the fact that you can get back a Cthulhu. Um, I just kind of wish it had taunt, but that's really wishful thinking and It'd be really overpowered if you did, but uh, yeah, really powerful card. I think you will see this as a one-off in the most cartoon decks, um, but we have to see how it sculpts out here. But I think it's just good enough to make a cut. So yeah, that'll be all for me for this video, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next part uh, when we finish off the set review. This has been JP signing out.